Good evening guys, it's um, the 8th of October and I've, I'm up a bit late, thought I'd speculate a little on this pipe so we could all maybe try and understand it a bit better. Or... So if you remember my previous uh, video, I, I measured across here and I got a diameter of about 1.4 kilometres, so I've drawn in a rough outline where I think the pipe might be. Now if you recall, these green uh, triangles represent the in-situ kimberlite and the um, gold circles here, the yellow circles, represent the reworked kimberlitic clay. Now interestingly, you can see, and I mentioned in one of my posts somewhere, that we've got the reworked kimberlite clay is coming right into the area of where we're mining at block 8, so that's interesting in itself. But what I see is that the, you know, the pipe could well extend underneath these reworked clays and also the alluvium that, uh, that's been mined here. Now, the, the point of this whole video here is to try and calculate the volume of the material that, that would have been shed out of this uh, fan-shaped valley system here and try and compare it maybe I, I don't know how valid it is, but to compare it to the uh, the estimates that the company made for the uh, the diamond bearing gravels that back in 2014. So um, luckily uh, Google's got this nice cute cute feature where you can just uh, make um, some profiles and it gives you uh, the uh, the topographic uh, elevation across the profile. So you can see here I've got my little arrow at the edge of my interpreted uh, Kimlott uh, pipe and you know you was down here. That, that's actually the high area as I explained in my last video and we're whizzing down into this little valley and then coming back towards the edge of the pipe here and then back up to the high ground over there once again. Now I've done this exercise for the five traverses and I found that um, the, this from from the top highlands here to the valley floor it's it's only about 10 meters uh, to the bottom from top to bottom on these three uh, profiles and then that one's about 14 meters this is 15 meters so from that it's it's not hard to just do a very very rough calculation based on the volume of a of a cylinder, and you end up uh, if you do that, you end up with uh, a volume of material that this pipe would have would have come from this pipe uh, if it does have this diameter of 1.4 kilometres of about uh, somewhere between seven and a half and 15 million cubic metres of material now. The interesting thing is if we uh, if we zoom out, we can zoom right out, and you can see these are the, these are the the workings of the uh, artisanal miners that have probably spanned many many years, if not decades. But the interesting thing is that the um, when you look in, into these areas that are further further south, further east, you don't see many of these workings. Uh, that's actually a village there. If we zoom in, we can we can just we can have a look and see. Right, that's that's a village. Yeah, you can see there the houses. If you come, we come further out. There's some workings here. They're a bit anomalous in respect of our pipe. Uh, and there's a smattering of workings here. But as you can see, the majority of the workings here, uh, whoops, uh, let me just try and control this a little bit better, uh, are extending from this fan shape out and along, this is the direction of flow of, of the river. Uh, to the to the north west, um, you can probably see that a, a little bit better if I play. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if it helps very much, but I found this this neat trick of 
being able to you can tie your your uh, your polygon to the ground and then extend it. Oh, sorry, you can extend it uh, uh, to the ground, uh, and then you can extend uh, it into space. So uh, that's that's about two kilometres into into the sky there, and um, so we can see our pipe uh, relative to the workings. There it is. There's our pipe, and those are our workings that I pointed out. Now, um, the the company estimated in March um, 2014, they made uh, an estimate for the number of uh, the amount of alluvial diamonds that they'd find when they made their mining lease application. They made an estimate, and that at that time it was half a million carats with a value of uh, US five hundred dollars per carat, and uh, they used the um, uh, to, to get that estimate. They they worked off the um, a surface area of um, of these terraces of two and a half um, thousand hectares, and the thickness for the for the gravels, the uh, high grade gravels of about point. 0.4 of a metre, um, then they, they discounted the, the area by 50% to end up with 5 million cubic metres. Now, the very interesting thing is that my calculation gives me uh, a lower bound of 7.5 seven, seven um, million cubic metres to 15 million cubic metres. Um, but the... Um, the company's estimate, without the lateritic gravels, which they didn't, they didn't even try to estimate, was five million. So, what I'm saying, and I don't know how valid it is, but that that fan shape area has shed, has shed um, something like seven and a half to fifteen million cubic meters of material, and that's approximately the same volume as the gravels that the uh, company has estimated. Uh, you know, make of it what you will, but to me, it looks like m most of the of the diamonds c could well have been shed from this pipe if it is truly found to be economic. Now, that's m just my interpretation. It's uh, it's non it's non professional, it's non expert. Just take it as you may. But uh, well, thanks for listening.